We are live. So welcome. Happy Passover. Happy Easter. Happy Ramadan. I think that's still going on. And um, we are knowing the highest and greatest good. I am live. I. Oh, wow. You got it already? If there's supposed to be a 20 second delay and it's only been 15 seconds. All right, Gary. Excellent. Good to know. Did he win the prize? No. Good morning. <laughs> All right. So, David, good morning. Happy Easter. And, John, good morning to you. So, you two each win a special spiritual mind treatment. And, Gary, you, you get one. Let me know, too. Okay. People in the audience. All right, so we are all here, and good morning, Angela. Good, we're here. I'm glad you all have arrived. All right, so let me begin with a spiritual mind treatment. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm still there, right? Okay, don't touch anything, Karen. Okay, fine. I'm just wondering why I'm not getting... Oh, okay, they've changed things. Thank you, Facebook. All right, so um, spiritual mind treatment. This word is being spoken for each one. And if there is anyone else or any place on this planet that you would like to have included, just think of their name or that place now and know that this word also includes them because this one life, call it God, one infinite mind, one divine creator is everywhere present. And it is infinite. And so it does not need to separate itself. It is not a bigger expression of a human with limitations. It is infinite. It is eternal. It is omnipresent. It knows all. It creates all. It is all-powerful. It does not get its energy used up. It, and it is... It does be fully present and attentive to every single aspect of its creation all the time. It is never distracted. It never is overwhelmed. It is never needing to put more energy, focus, or power in one spot than another because it is knowing all of its goodness everywhere, all the time, simultaneously. And so that life, that divine creator, that knower is now in each and every place with each and every person now being included in this special prayer. And where it is knowing itself, it is bringing to each one its crystal clarity. It is bringing to each one the wisdom that comes from knowing everything. This infinite mind knows all potential possibilities, and it knows everything else that's going on, and it knows everything about each one's own particular world. It knows what's on its way. It knows what's already in motion. It knows what every single human is doing on this planet. So it knows with all of this knowing, it knows those choices, those actions, for each one here to know, to always be on that path of moving from good to greater good in ways and means of goodness. Because this infinite mind is creating this entire universe and everything in it. It clearly knows how to arrange the planets and the stars in orbit, in movement, in harmony, in balance, in order. And it knows at that subatomic level how to arrange the particles, the quarks, the atoms, so that form can take a specific manifestation and disassemble itself and take on another. A carrot can become food for a human body, and in that body, the nutrients that are required can be given to whether the liver or the lungs or whatever it is that needs it. And it knows how to be released peacefully and harmoniously and become something else that is nutritious and that is part of the cycle of this one life taking form. So each one is now aware of the genius 
of this infinite intelligence and its omnipresence and that all of its intelligence, all of its attention, all of its focus is right where each one is and its guidance is always available to each one. And so each one is now claiming that divine guidance and demanding to know that guidance with crystal clarity so that each one is able to follow that guidance with trust, with confidence, with strength and conviction to take each step forward knowing that each one is being gracefully and graciously moved from good to greater good and that before each one the path is clear and that what lies before each one is wonderful experiences that there is greater good which is wonderful to behold and joyous and truly inspiring and empowering to participate in that each being is also infinite and that there is infinite potential for expression and so no matter how long anyone has been around on the planet and no matter how what little or much anyone has done with their life there is still present infinite possibility for experiencing greater good and so each one is claiming that path now of moving from good to greater good in ways and means of goodness each one is claiming it and looking forward to it and enjoying it in every level of expression in every plane of action on in every area of his or her life each one is experiencing more livingness, more life and vitality, more health is required and provided to each one to do all the new and wonderful things he or she desires to do. Each one is fully supported in expressing more of this livingness by the very love of the universe, experiencing more love, expressing as harmony, as wonderful connection with others as a joyous communion in living and sharing this life with others wherever he or she is with whomever he or she is connected with and this life supports itself in all ways in creating a strong body and wonderful relationships but also in providing all that is required including money finances ideas the paperwork the technology Everything is designed by the divine to support its easier, freer, more joyous and harmonious expression of this life that it is, that is manifesting as each one's own particular life. And so each one is expecting the best and greater good, far beyond anything that anyone has experienced so far, is ready to enter each one's life each one is open to it each one is accepting it each one is looking forward to it each one is filled with an eager anticipation and already right now it begins to arrive it begins to demonstrate it begins to change the experience of living by each one so that right now each one is healthier than before wealthier than before more loving and having more people express that love toward them than ever before and has more opportunities to express the talents and gifts that the divine has given to each one to express all of this is happening now each one is accepting it and i know that this treatment is a done deal that it is already in motion, it is already in action, it is already happening, and each one of us simply accepts it, agrees with it, and lets this word go, allowing it to be what it is, by saying together, and so it is. That's the way it is. So we accept that now, and look forward to this day, and we begin this morning with special wonderful music surprise with Scott Allen. Surprise! surprise. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Amazing grace, 
How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fear relieved. How precious, how, how precious did this grace appear. The hour I first believed Through many dangers, toils, and snares I have already come Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me, His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. And so we take this moment now to connect with our heart and claim that promised good and accept all of the grace, that amazing grace that does set us free. We claim all that our heart desires, and we know it is given to each one of us this day. Yes, when this flesh and heart shall fail, and mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun for better shine. But God, who called me here below, shall be forever mine. You know what they say, that's a tough act to follow. <laughs> Mainly because I'm emotional right now. Not because I'm judging myself in any way. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. And welcome to Center for Spiritual Living Princeton. We are a loving, healing, inclusive community that teaches and practices the principles of the science of mind for the spiritual growth and well-being of ourselves and the world. And I have to thank you for that. That's one of my favorite songs, Scott. Thank you so much. So I have to share with you that <laughs> Karen's topic this morning, spiritual resurrection, slow and clean or fast and messy. <laughs> it got me thinking about the word resurrection. And it means many things. It means renewal, rebirth. Uh, in Christian science, it's regeneration. 
Joel Goldsmith refers to us releasing all that doesn't serve us. He calls it dying daily so that we can live anew. And in our teaching, we talk about each day we can, each breath can be a new opportunity for understanding of spiritual growth. So <laughs> I, um, it brought me back to my teacher training, my practitioner training, fast and messy. <laughs> and I wanted to share this with you because as you go on in unveiling the truth that is you, the perfection that is you, sometimes you get hit over the head with a revelation, some new idea of understanding spiritual um, truth. And it butts against your false beliefs, and you want to hold on to those because change, change is hard. So during my practitioner training, there were days and oh gosh, my classmates aren't here to attest to this, but Karen is, where the truth hit me so hard I was sobbing. I felt like the, the rug got pulled out from under me. And that, that's pretty fast and messy, but you know, it was great because afterwards you feel so, so clear and so light. And then there are days when the truth isn't happening fast enough, and again, you're hitting yourself over the head saying, What's next? Why do I feel like I'm in the doldrums? Why do I feel like I just am hanging on to my false beliefs? So as it is with spirit, I was reading a book this morning. It's a beautiful book if you've ever heard of it. It's called Change Me Prayers by Tasha Silver. And the first thing I opened kind of brought me to the remembering of not only my divine truth, but my path. And I know that we all have these opportunities to remember our path. Sometimes we find ourselves in doom and gloom, and sometimes we find ourselves in joy, but either way, we're always on this path of remembering our truth. So this is beautiful, it's a blessing that I thought I would just share with everybody. It's called New Cycle. Change me, divine beloved, into one who knows that the perfect unfolding is always occurring, even in times of invisible transition. So you really don't have to hit yourselves over the head. You just don't see it happening, right? Let me trust that all unseen growth will be known at the right time. Let me have faith in your plan. May I welcome this new cycle as it births. Let me bless its unfolding. And so, as I was thinking about our beloved Reverend Karen and how she brings us these Sunday messages, I was thinking about our mission statement of serving mankind and ourselves and the world and the ways that we do it. And of course, one way is this service. And one way is there's a 24-7 affirmative prayer available anytime you need uplift. And that is on our website. And also we have wonderful practitioners here who are ready and eager to hold the space of truth for you and to support you in your spiritual growth. And we have classes. Currently the foundations class is closed, but I know <laughs> I have heard rumor that another one's about to happen, maybe later. So one of my good friends told me, stay posted. We will never let you be in the dark. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I'm in the dark. <laughs> oh, don't worry. You shall soon see the light. <laughs> and um, you can always request an affirmative prayer. And we also have lovely <laughs> community events. And we happen to have one upcoming this next Sunday. Blessings into the spring. We have a lovely menu. Some people have volunteered to bring food. If you want to be there, great. If you want to volunteer to bring food, great. Let me know. It's all a happening, and it's always joy-filled and a lovely time to connect with our community. So thank you again for being here. And now I am assuming that Scott is going to bless us with another song. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, kicking the furniture. 
on a clear day. Rise and look around you, and you'll see who you are. On a clear day, how it will astound you that the glow of your being outshines every star you'll feel part of every mountain, sea, and shore. You can hear from far and near a world you've never heard before. And on a clear day, on that clear day, you will see forever and ever more. You'll feel part of every mountain, sea, and shore. You can hear from far and near a world you've never heard before. And on that clear day, on that clear day, you will see forever and ever and ever more. All right. Yeah. There. And now, Mr. Jeff. Good morning, Good morning Jeff. everyone, everyone who's here and everybody who isn't here, or who will be here, <laughs> maybe, if, if they are. Uh, yes, so my name is Jeff, and I'm practitioner of the day, and I am going to lead us in a, a meditation as the screen gets adjusted magically. <laughs> so wherever you are, and even if you aren't, do it anyway. Um, wh wherever you are, uh, be comfortable where you're sitting. And what that means is release your, surrender completely to gravity. That's what that means. Allow the chair in which you sit to be fully supporting of you. Release all of the, whatever the weight, uh, the, the mass of your body is, release it to, to gravity and trust. Trusting the chair and also trusting the floor and trusting gravity that you are being held, which you are. Breathing in deeply through both nostrils. Breathing out deeply through both nostrils. Inhaling through both nostrils. Breathe in deeply more. Breathing out through both nostrils. Inhaling once again deeply. Hold the breath for a moment. Breathe in some more. And now breathing out through both nostrils. Allow the the breathing now to continue on its own without your consciously directing it, trusting that the breathing is going to breathe because this body and this world is safe and is supporting us. And I'm reading these words now, closing your eyelids You are a fountain of light, and the living waters of life th flow through you. I am a fountain of light, and the living waters of life flow through me. These waters cannot help but to renew and refresh. These waters are flowing as the physical, the mental, and the energetic. These waters are, have particularized themselves as the very essence of the thing I call myself and the thing you call yourself. They are our very inmost self. 
They are the central palpable me I have known myself to be for this entire birth, this entire life. The thing, the being, the person I identify myself to be is an individualized version of this limitless light that is the source of all that exists. The essential message of Easter is that this life that is living in, through, and as, and all around me and you is never born and can never die. This life is eternity and there is only one moment that is eternity and that moment is now. And from the proper perspective, it is always now. We are to know the truth both of both aspects of ourselves. We are the universal, the unbounded, the eternal, and at exactly the same moment, the same time. We are this particularized, individualized version of this creation. This paradox can seem to be difficult to fathom, yet it is absolutely true our success comes through this simultaneous embracing of the universal and the individual exactly simultaneously occurring. Don't worry if you don't seem to have these truths embodied. Don't worry if you have doubts. Don't worry if it seems that things are a messy tangle. Don't worry even if you find yourself worrying. This moment is always present. It is always and only absolutely right now. It's trustworthy. You can never miss it, even if it seems that you are missing it. There is always, always, always a second chance, a third chance, a 23rd chance, an 88th chance. There is one mind in continuous creation and you are a resident in it. It has created you in order to act through you. When you place your subconscious mind and the subconscious here is the same thing as the unconscious, what you place in this mind must appear in your experience. The universe is foolproof. You are a wellspring from which the divine effulgence is steadily emerging and expressing itself into the world. The infinite is forever in the process of self-discovery. I am pure intelligence, always acting intelligently. Say this to yourself silently. I am pure intelligence, always acting intelligently. And this pure intelligence also is pure love. It is pure light. It is pure beauty. You were born as intelligence in a universe of, of intelligence to unfold, evolve, and create as intelligence. <clears throat> the universe is undisturbed by human stupidity. The universe is never in a hurry. You are greater than you think. The pun in the above sentence is intended. The universe is decisive. It is unconcerned with your mistakes, my mistakes. Which does not mean, by the way, that the universe does not care about you. It cares about you more than you will ever know and it is working tirelessly on your behalf at all times, including those times when you are full of self-doubt, fear, and thoughts of lack and limitation. The universe is a success. It is being a success as you. You are a timeless, spaceless, individualization of life. You are a timeless, spaceless 
individualization of life. <clears throat> the real you is not only invisible, it is also immeasurable. The real you is not only invisible, it is immeasurable. And I forgot to say at the beginning that some of those words, some of them were the words of Raymond Charles Barker. So with this in mind, with this have, knowing that you are a timeless, spaceless, perfect individualization of life, that is here in this theater, in this dimension, in this body to have fun and to laugh and to feel joy and to be of service and to create ongoingly <clears throat> and now Lend your ears as I speak this word of truth. There is only one power, one presence, one love, one joy. That power is everywhere. It is good. It is always good. It knows what it is doing. It is present right now, right here, in everybody who's listening and also everybody who's not listening. It is in all the spaces in between and all the nooks and crannies of existence. And this power is good and this power is intent upon expressing more of itself, more love, more health, more laughter, more joy, more serious work, more serious play. This power is here to straighten out, is, is straighten out any tangles that may have occurred. It is straightening out the road, it is lighting up the road ahead. This power is being felt inside and all around every single person who's listening, every single one who's listening. And everyone knows and is accepting and knowing that this is true, that this is word is true, and that this power is trustworthy and reliable. And everyone is giving way to it, is recognizing that they are it. They are a perfect expression of it. They are, and perfect means just, just the way it is. They are a perfect expression of it, and that is good. Everyone is simultaneously knowing the joy of this moment and the joy of the road ahead. Everyone is very gently leaning forward into this next new moment that is always occurring. This power is presence in this great is present in this great silence in between the words. It is always there and always here and always everywhere. And so as this power breathes each person breathe their lungs in and out, breathe into existence the, the processes of their body and of their mind and of their affairs and of their life and their, of their loved ones and their world. 
Each one is now knowing this is true and trusting and recognizing the amazing grace of existence and praising it and giving praise to it and opening with hymns of hallelujah. So I now, knowing that this, this word is reliable and that this word is a word of power and that this word is so and that it cannot not be. The law is making it so, is creating all of this, is not right now creating all of this to be and in all of the moments to come. And knowing this and trusting this, I now release this word to the law, trusting and loving and knowing that it is so and with great laughter and exultation, join me in saying, and so it is. A whole takuyasana. Thank you, Jeffrey. Wonderful. <laughs> Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. Feeling good. Dragonflies out in the sun, you know what I mean. Butterflies all having fun. You know what I mean, sleep in peace when day is done, that's what I mean. And this old world is a new world and a bold world for me. Stars, when you shine, you know how I feel. Scent of the pine, you know how I feel. Freedom is mine. I know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. Feeling good. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yes. Okay, so that's how we want to feel, right? <laughs> uh, so today is Easter Sunday um, and other uh, religious beliefs having similar spring-like rituals happening right now. And we, in this teaching of the science of mind, we also are all aiming for a spring-like experience. Call it resurrection. Call it a new day, a new dawn, feeling good, feeling free. And so um, that's what we aim for all the time. And based upon our beliefs, we go for that feeling better, feeling free, um, in different ways. And we here, who are meeting here, we engage in what we call spiritual practices. In other words, we practice replicating that which is divinely true, that which is our nature, that which is spiritual. And so we practice, we do spiritual practices. And today, we're celebrating because we just finished 40 days of spiritual practice. I call it Tesserakanta. And we had more people enrolled than in recent years, and more people than ever showed up every single morning live on the call. I don't know who specifically is showing up, but I, I get a little summary of the numbers and how long everybody was on and that kind of thing. And I was always surprised because at least more, more than half of, the, of those who enrolled were actually present for that 7.45 a.m. 
Eastern time spiritual practice. We did have people who were enrolled with us from other states, other time zones. So, and then others or the same people would listen again to the recorded call. It was a spiritual practice and our purpose, our intention was clarity. And personally, I received so much clarity, but not where I wanted to get it, <laughs> but certainly where I needed it. And sometimes what I got clarity about is what I am doing that is just getting in the way of my experience in greater good. Now, I had no clue I was getting in the way by engaging in certain habits. I thought it was just fine. But obviously and clearly, I was shown, no, you got to stop it and you got to stop it now. So with whatever we have accomplished throughout these, these particular 40 days or in all of our spiritual practice, here we are now. And I thought what I would share with you is some material that Reverends Lloyd Strom and Marcia Sutton developed years ago, and they revised it in 2013. So they probably originally developed this in the, around 1990, I'm thinking, something like this. But it's important information to know when you're engaging in spiritual practice, right? Because what we want, right? We want to do a spiritual mind treatment, which is perhaps the easiest spiritual practice to do. You know, that, I, this is it, that's it, boom. And we want to see instantaneous, immediate, and total healing. Go away problem, vanish. We want that. Now here's the realities of spiritual practice they tell us. In truth, God truth, capital T, truth, the results of spiritual practice will always be quick, deep, and comfortable. However, in little r reality, we harbor hidden fears or error beliefs. And so, as a result, our spiritual practice can only produce two of these qualities at the same time. So you get to choose. The, the qualities are quick, deep and comfortable and you only get to pick two quick deep or comfortable now if your results are quick some comments about that we live in a fast mood society and it's getting faster and faster in fact I heard a podcaster um, say that, and this, this evidence they actually uncovered about a decade ago, that you know how it, we could identify ourselves in the generation that we're in, like about every 10 years, like you know what 50s, people who were raised in the 50s are like, you know, the poodle skirts and all that, and then people raised in the 60s are, you know, crazy. And then, you know, <laughs> that would be me, right? In the 70s, the 80s, there's a, you know, there's, um, and then we've started labeling the baby boomers, Generation X, Generation Y, whatever. Anyway, what they're saying is these generations now, um, that the way of thinking and what the people identify with, it actually is happening every 18 months. I can't comprehend that because I'm not that quick. But anyway, your results can come quick. Living in this fast mood society where it is difficult to sustain any sort of arduous effort over a long period of time. Consequently, any prolonged process that is excessively slow and tedious will not be well received. Right, we like Emma Curtis Hopkins way. This too is God, this too is good, this too is for me and I demand to see my blessing now <laughs> with the stamp. Uh, we like that way, we want it immediate and that's a choice. Your results can be meaningful 
or deep. And to produce meaningful results, we must initiate fundamental changes deep within our being. Consequently, any process that does not involve deep work, inner work, will generally be fruitless and are not likely to produce things happening, lasting changes. So I can certainly do an affirmation. I can certainly know a truth. I can get a fast result, but I don't really deal with the false beliefs and fears within me. That's okay, but you're going to be doing an awful lot of that kind of work because your same false belief is going to keep creating another one and another one and another one. For those of us who um, are in miserable situations of some sort and new on our spiritual journey, right? The first thing that, well, certainly I did when I first began was, I'm not the problem. It's these rotten people that I work with. It's the employer. It's them. They, and all I knew to, to I need to do to improve my life is just change my job or change my partner or, you know, and so um, your results are quick that way, right? And, um, but that, it's not very deep. It's certainly more comfortable than taking a look at myself, but, um, oh, what a surprise. In the next job, I discover the same lousy people. One time, I I was in the worst job situation I have ever been in in my life. It was pretty bad. And um, it began when uh, a new supervisor, a new boss came in who we all agreed was crazy. And I tried everything to get out of there. And I finally, after a year and a half, I resigned. And they immediately offered me a transfer instead of resigning because I used to be good before, you know, this crazy person took over. And so they transferred me elsewhere in the bank. And the people there mentioned to me later that when I first came in, they felt like I was like a battered child and they needed to like, just be gentle with me. You know, I'd be doing my good, but I must have had a, 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 an attitude or a look of just like complete, you know, now I guess they would call it, you know, P, post-traumatic stress disorder or something because it was like, whoa, you what, what, <laughs> whatever. And, uh, but um, I got comfortable in that new position. And then one day I found out my old boss had visited my new boss and was trying to take over some of the work I was doing. And it was like, ah, blah, 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 so, um, so clearly my error followed me then. Okay. So we got, we got quick, we got meaningful and comfortable. Our results can be comfortable and it is human nature to avoid any kind of experience that disturbs us emotionally. Consequently, we generally tend to avoid any process that contains elements of fear, conflict, or upset. The old adage, no pain, no gain, is rarely put into practice by most people. Okay, so I'm asking you now, once again, do you, you get to choose two, quick, deep, or comfortable? All right, you've all got your, you all picked? Okay, now here's what happens. <laughs> if you chose quick and comfortable, um, your results will be relatively shallow. It will be capable of producing only superficial results, if any at all. How many of you have gone on a fast for a diet, right? How many of you know, what was it? The grapefruit diet? The three days of grapefruit, all you eat is grapefruits for three days. Or uh, I think there was another one where all you ate was cabbage. Some, I don't know, something like that. Cabbage soup. Cabbage soup, yes. <laughs> three days, boy, you lost a ton of weight. Quick, comfortable, you know, just eating this stuff. Gone right away, and then a week later it was all back, right? So it's relatively shallow. 
um, it will be capable of producing only superficial results. That's fast and comfortable. An example of such a process would involve the compiling of a wish list of desired outcomes, right, or a treasure map. In order for these goals to be attained, we will have to put forth an arduous effort and be willing to face our fears in the form of challenges in the outer world. But, you know, I want it fast. I want it quick. I mean, a lot of uh, intense workshops, uh, which are uh, primarily emotionally energized and charged, but they really don't have you much do much deep work. You know, you feel you're flying high, right? When you leave those things, you're ready to leave that and, and go back to your life and change everything, right? And then you go back to your life and you look at it and you go, oh my God, this is going to require more work than I thought and uh, whatever. And then I don't know how many hundreds, I'm, I hate, I'm a, well, let's say, all right, let's, let's say 50 binders I have of such workshops where I bring it all home and then all I need to just apply this stuff and everything's going to be better and they're all in a box somewhere. Okay, anyway, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want, quick and comfortable, but don't expect any lasting change to really happen. Hey, if you've got a reunion, a wedding you're going to, that's the thing, okay? There you go. Now, those of you who chose comfortable and deep, those results will be gradual or slow, comfortable but deep work. It will be relatively slow. Meaningful changes will come about in a very gradual way that will not be upsetting to us. An example of such a process is when we continuously pray over a long period of time for a desired outcome. This type of process requires great perseverance, and we will face our fears primarily in the form of doubts that will challenge us to give up. So I call those projects. I'm working on it. I'm going deep. Uh, I'm not expecting an overnight result, um, but it's up there in my practice. It's up there in my focus. Um, but I'm probably giving an equal amount of energy to it every day, throughout the day, throughout months, years, gradual. And you'll see the tendency your life is taking. It gradually things get improved, improved, improved. And in that kind of process, sometimes it's even hard to realize you've resurrected because it was all so gradual, but step by step. And then we've got our third way. How many of you chose quick and deep? Somebody raise their hand. So that says a process that is both quick and deep will usually be uncomfortable. And when they first came out with this, the word was messy. <laughs> messy. And one of the ways it's messy is there may be a lot of tears coming out of you. It's quick and it's deep. Meaningful changes will come about rather quickly when we are willing to face our hidden fears in order to release them. An example of such a process is when we face our fears by engaging in deep spiritual practice that clarify our intentions and reveals all that is unhealed within us. As a result of the deep healing that takes place, newness will emerge in the form of inspired ideas that will meet with relatively little opposition in the outer world. That's, I think, that clear, that new day. It's a new day. It's a new life, and I'm feeling good. I think that's what that experience is. To face our fears is uncomfortable because to face the fears, we feel the fear, and I'd rather not. And we might have to face some things we've been believing or things that we've done or not done that we would rather not take a second look at. And so for me, that's painful to go back to an event of my past 
that I did not complete at the time in a healthy way. And yet, what we learn from the science of mind is these beliefs that created something in our past still live in us and are still creating a part of our world until we handle it. And that's the deep work that we have to do. And for me, I prefer to do the fast, deep work when I have a spiritual mentor, a spiritual practitioner to hold my spiritual hand, to be knowing the truth for me. I always think about the little girl, I think the movie, early 1950s movie or 60s movie, it was in black and white, it might have been Twilight Zone or something, a little girl who fell through the wall into, you know, into who knows where, and her father is like, could hear her, daddy, daddy, whatever, I don't know. And he had to go in there to get her. And I always think when I'm looking at my past pain and those false beliefs that come up, that I am blind, that I'm, that I'm in fog, I don't know where I am, but boy, would I like a hand to hold. And that's what I see my spiritual mentor is doing. Someone who is holding my hand, someone who is knowing the truth and can see the light and can just be holding my spiritual hand while I'm crying and, and freaking out and you know, whatever, feeling all the fear, feeling all the pain. I remember at one point when I was doing very, very deep work uh, with deep, deep spiritual practice very, very quickly. At one point, uh, a candle I had lit set fire to my bookcase that it was on. And I happened to notice it after an hour of saying, don't do this, folks. After an hour of saying, love is the central flame of the universe. <laughs> Nay, the very fire itself. An hour of that. Okay, so that was deep, intensive spiritual work. And I opened up my eyes, and I'm <laughs> my bookcase is on fire. Well, you know, it was like, you know, ready to be ablaze, but it was just, you know, those red, anyway. So, you know, I immediately moved to <laughs> mode and try to, you know, pull out all the books and try to pull out the bookcase and out of the room and get it into the bathtub and at the same time throw ice on it and squirt water on it while I'm also calling my spiritual mentor who was in California at the time and was surely asleep saying, and I was doing spiritual work about uh, my first religion, which was Catholicism, and I, you know, I left the message, the Catholic Church is coming to kill me! <laughs> treat! Treat! <laughs> and I hung up and I kept dealing with it. Well, you know, uh, God got her to wake up quickly, and she did, she called me, and she, again, that spiritual mentor, she's like, the Catholic Church loves you. I'm like, I set my house on fire! <laughs> 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 Whatever. Um, not much else happened except for um, my bookcase uh, was charred, charred, just charred. Uh, but to have that spiritual mentor when my life, my demonstration got messy, messy, physically messy. Other ways that this discomfort has come up is in terms of physical heal healing. I've had, you know, done deep spiritual work. In fact, during our, this past Tessera Kanta, doing this deep spiritual work, and I uh, whacked a certain part of my body, which is still um, telling me, stop hurting yourself. Stop hurting yourself. Look where you are going. It matters. I thought it didn't matter. I'd be covered with blacks and blues, ah, blah, 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 whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm moving forward. And life is like, it does matter. And that had never crossed my mind before. But I got, I got the message very clearly. So we have a choice. Now, the discomfort or the messiness, if we do fast and deep spiritual work, is only because of the false beliefs that we have that unconsciously we are resistant to changing. 
And when we resist learning the lesson, when we resist hearing the truth, when we resist realizing we're wrong, our egos get bruised and we feel very vulnerable, embarrassed. It could go there. I've been there. Uh, I could call it public humiliation. And I have to often do forgiveness work. Forgive me for being such an idiot. I didn't know. It's very uncomfortable. But as soon as we face all of that that's coming up for us, oh, the sweet relief. It's over. It's done with. It's out of us. That false belief that had been something we were dragging around for our entire lifetimes came up. We felt the worst of it, but that's the way for it to go away. To look at those fears and to face them to see that there is nothing to fear here. I on Thursday and Friday, my roof was replaced. And the relief when it finally began to happen, because for over a year, I've been watching all my neighbors get their roofs replaced and looking at all their complaints and what they went through. And, you know, clearly the contractors are just the worst ever as they, you know, the poor people going around replacing our roofs and underneath and all those households, these are the worst people ever. And I'm like sitting there preparing for this, but at the same time, I'm like, there is a God, life is good. And I'm doing Tessera Kanta. Can it possibly be that my roof can actually be replaced? So until it began, I was filled with anxiety. But as soon as they put the dumpster in my parking lot, okay, the fear was gone. It was like, okay, now I just have to deal with it. And I felt equal to dealing with it. I'll just deal with it. And I listened to my inner guidance. It said, take your patio furniture up. Uh, my neighbor said he put a tarp over his air conditioner. I got it at Home Depot. I went to Home Depot. I got a tarp. I put it on there. Um, I decided to stay there with my cat because 20 years ago when the roof got replaced, my cats were freaked. And I'm like, well, let me be with the cat so the cat isn't freaked. <laughs> and so the two of us together cowered in the corner in the house while ripping and banging and all this stuff was going on. And um, the thing was, it was easier. It was so much easier for me to deal with all these things I had to do and the things that were coming up for me that I had to face. At one point when it was all over, I wanted to ask the, the supervisor a question. And I was afraid, you know, the little Karen, I don't want to bother the room and they told us not to talk to them. And I'm like, but he's out there. And what if you go out there? And I said, okay, I'll do, all I'll do is just put my shoes on. And I did. So there was still stuff I needed to process, that little, I don't want to talk to him, fear, whatever. But it wasn't anything like that anxiety, the, you know, the night before of being awake all night. It was when we are facing our fears, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and even in the world. We, we've got something we can deal with. And we get that divine guidance and we, we take a, another breath and we just deal with it. And it's easier than a lifetime of dragging around the, right, that weight of that fear in you, that false belief, the energy of avoiding it, the energy to do spiritual work, to not have it happen again continuously. Uh, just face it already. And so I think, um, I don't know where you're at with this. They're all the results of spiritual practice. Spiritual practice, it will always bless our lives. Definitely. My, my fast and comfortable spiritual practices over decades and decades have produced changes in my life and probably have well prepared me to do deeper spiritual work.
gave me some confidence. Okay, now I'll take a look at myself. All right, I'm ready on this one. Ah, get my mentor, get my spiritual practices, take a deep breath and lean in. Keep going through, keep going through. No, keep going through. Ah. On that clear day. So um, the choice is ours though. Being here, watching on our, our live feed, our recorded feed, whatever, you're interested in, in improving the, the quality of your life. And spiritual practice is a way of getting more permanent results than all of that physical energy, mental energy, all that effort. Um, for those of you who've been around here for a while, you remember um, when I first came here, I was 40, 30 or 40 pounds heavier than this. And um, I had already tried every diet under the book to be this weight that I am now. Um, and at a certain point, I just was guided to stop it, stop all that dieting and just let your body be what your body is. And it just grew. And I practiced a spiritual practice. I practiced loving my body just the way it was. And I wasn't very pleased at the number that was there but I was determined to just practice loving it, whatever it was. And so I reached that top weight and, um, and then a new guidance came through about how to approach what I eat. And as a result, it's been a very gradual but effortless and very comfortable experience of going back to this weight that I am. Very gradual, very peaceful, but uh, even now I see some extra weight on me and when I ask my higher wisdom self, what is this false belief around my waist? What is this? And boy, I know what it is. It's protection. Because that belief in being hurt still lives in me. And it's unconscious. And it's not disrupting my life too much. And if I don't mind being a little bit, you know, wider around the waist, you know, I can certainly wear clothes where you can't see it. And I think last week when I wore stuff, everybody's like, oh, you look so thin. Yeah, well, you didn't look under the clothes. But, the, um, you know, and you won't. <laughs> and you would be arrested if you did. I am protected, right? But I know that belief in in hurt and harm and, and, and pain, suffering, all of that still lives in me. And I know also that at the right time for me, when I've got my spiritual support in place, the time, the energy, the mentor, all that in place, at that, that some point I'll be guided, okay, let's take another look at this one. Are you ready? Because, you know, anyone who believes in hurt and harm, right? That's a scary place to go. <laughs> but I want to be on the other side. And so I know someday I will be. So wherever you are, there's a spiritual practice for you, right? We've got um, quick and comfortable affirmations really great spiritual mind treatments, writing down a hundred times a day. I am a fabulous comedy sketch writer, whatever that is. All work and they're all building consciousness. That's fine. Uh, you can go comfortable and deep, uh, but practice patience. I was listening to David Allen uh, the past couple of days and he quoted this. Piano, piano, va lontano, which means slow, slow, but you'll go far. And it was in Italian, so I got very excited. 
The longer, the longer saying is, chi va piano va sano e va lontano, which means whoever goes slowly goes safe and far. And so, um, but if you do go that way, uh, David Allen said that somebody once said, heaven has a huge warehouse of almost answered prayers because the people gave it up right before it was about to happen. So to practice patience is definitely necessary if you want your results to be meaningful but comfortable. But then when you're ready and you're guided and you've got your spiritual support around you, I definitely recommend having someone knowing the truth for you and you're ready to go deep and quick. Well then, you know, make sure you have a nice supply of tissues uh, because you'll need it. <laughs> and that's a good thing because if those tears come out or the emotions come up and you don't let yourself cry, whatever. But the thing is that they're, they're, it's the emotions that you're feeling are not new ones. They're buried, repressed icebergs living in you. And your deep, fast spiritual practice is bringing it all up and the melting flows all over. But once it's melted, the sun dries it up, and it's gone forever. No more icebergs. So that's our choices, and we certainly do have spiritual mind practitioners who are available to hold your hand <laughs> should you decide to go fast and deep, and they will certainly support you in going deeper by listening to you. If you have a consultation, they listen to you, and they're listening to that inner wisdom guiding them, and they're saying exactly the thing that you need to become aware of. You might be believing in hurt or harm. You might be believing in loss. You might be believing no one loves you. You might be believing these things, but it's not the truth. <sighs> and so we, let's release it and do that spiritual work to let it go. Okay? So there, we're ready. Happy Easter. Good morning to you, Clee. I see that up there. And um, let's move forward. You want to sing another song, Scott? Okay. Okay, he will. <laughs> He's ready. If you twist my arm, I'll oh, be thinking. Uh, that was a Twilight Zone episode. It was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't remember the title. Do you? My no? generation. But anyway, so this song is a song to help us to release the anxieties, the tangles, the frustrations, and soothe the savage breast. And most of you know this, or many of you know this, so if you want to sing along, by all means, don't. <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding. Please, by all means, uh, we'll do it twice, just because it's a short song. It's called Let There Be Peace on Earth. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as our Father, brothers all are we. Let me walk with my brothers in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. One more time. Yeah. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. 
Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as our Father, brothers all are we. Let me walk with my brothers in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me, let this be my moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Thank you, Mr. Oh. That's it. Okay. So are you all done, or do you have another song? I've had it. <laughs> He's had it. All right, we've had it due. Let me do a closing treatment. This word is being spoken for each one. Look, there is nothing to be afraid of. All there is is the all good, and this is each one's life. And each one is able to accept this all good in a greater way than ever before. And if any particular spiritual practice is required to know this in a greater way, that spiritual practice is easy and effortless, and each one is experiencing deep, fast, and comfortable resolution and resurrection. This is the spiritual truth, and each one is completely and totally supported in experiencing that eternal truth. I am grateful that this is so. I release this word to the law. It's done, and so it is. And that's the way it is. So have a great weekend. Talk to you next week. All right? Margit says, wonderful, Scott. Thank you, Tina. All these little happy Easter to everybody. Margit, Robert Hummel, um, John and David. Who else do I have? Michael and... Arlene, Clee, and Angela. I think I've got you all who have checked in. So good to see you all. Have a great day. Enjoy your spring. Bye.